Now, South African Through the Line Communications Agency, the Hardy Boys, has been honoured as a global winner at Diageo's Marketing Brilliance Awards held in London, where it took home uh, the title of Best Innovation Agency for the African launch of a beverage called Snap. We were joined a little earlier by Managing Director Dale Tomlinson in Durban, who reflected on his win, his agency, and the power of being an independent. MD from the Hardy Boys in Durban, a very warm welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, your agency has just won Best Innovation Agency for the African launch of SNAP. What was the brief? What is SNAP? And what did you do? Right, Jeremy, it's quite a complex one. Um, SNAP is a ready-to-drink um, uh, beverage for, for Africa. Uh, the brief was to find a unique kind of insight that would allow SNAP to resonate with, with, with local consumers. Um, and there's been a, a tendency, I think, in Africa that when products are developed, they're developed primarily with men in mind, especially in the beverage and drink sector. So uh, Diageo, as being an innovative company as they are, are looking hard and fast at finding solutions that meet uh, women's needs. And um, traditionally, women in Africa have had to resort to beer, which is not very feminine, especially when you want to go out for a night and you want to have a fairly... Uh, fun social evening and have a little bit of class and chicness about it. So Snap really almost kind of gives you um, a bit of a champagne experience um, and the campaign was to deliver that that learning, launch the brand, appeal to the right people. We did it through TV, we did it through massive billboards, we did it through taste sessions. We launched in probably Nairobi and Lagos and I believe one of the most successful new product launches that they've had across the globe in, in years and it's resonated really really well it's obviously the insight was right the product offering was right and the communication spanned two countries quite comfortably and seemed to seems to have done the job it's done well for us and i believe done very well for Diageo. Dale how do you mine the African insight when you have a project like this I assume that you can't apply South African brand rules to a job like this you actually can't, uh, Jeremy. Um, I mean, obviously, I think working in South Africa and working across multiple LSMs does kind of sensitize you to the fact that this is not a guy in New York and this is not London or Paris. But I think the only way to really get it right is to have your teams constantly in the field. Um, with Snap, we went into market with, um, with the Diageo people. We went into research into homes and pubs and nightclubs in Nigeria um, uh, and Kenya and in even Ghana. We do that on a regular basis to try and see the kind of habits because you can go from a very small outlet, which is a very informal, casual drinking place, which maybe not is ideal for Snap. But then you can go into some very sophisticated nightclubs um, that would emulate a, a Johannesburg, New York, uh, experience and you've got to get that kind of nuance right uh, and also there's a sensitivity that sometimes um, a campaign will, will not even travel between African countries yet alone continents so this the choice of music has to be careful the choice of dress sense the choice of environment has to be carefully thought out uh, so it's a sensitive one you get it right you you sort of kind of on a home run when you get it wrong you can sure. do the brand a bit of damage I was just thinking that it's a tough assignment for your strategists and your creative people and your researchers. Here's the company credit card. Go into bars and <laughs> immerse yourself in the product. A lot of people would like that job. Let's talk about the word innovation, yeah. Dale Tomlinson, if we can. How do you put this notion of innovation at the center of agency thinking? One of the beauties, I think, of working in Africa is the fact that it really is a country up for innovation. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough continent to work in because obviously there's such a multiplicity of people and habits and skills um, and you need to, it's a bit of a minefield, but there is a blank canvas. There is opportunity for stuff that hasn't been done before. Um, the African continent is a very absorptive one. They embrace technology. I mean, the fact that the continent is absorbed in, into handheld technology mm -hmm. so incredibly fast. Um, so when you put something exciting down, if it's relevant, um, it's adopted very quickly, um, and you, but you do need to be sensitive. You need to understand that uh, you're breaking some traditions. That people have done things so often in so many ways, and those traditions are very different in South Africa as they are in Nairobi, Ghana, Mozambique, uh, any of the Ang Angola, any of the African countries. There are nuances that you've got to be a little bit sensitive to. I'm also very interested in the business model that the Hardy Boys is adopting. You say that over the years you've developed valuable relationships with other African agencies. How do you manage and leverage that cooperation? 
it's very much, and it is collaboration, it's very much based on trust. It was a way of working we developed when we were uh, working on, on the Barclays business across Africa. We managed the Barclays brand and also communications in 11 countries for a couple of years. Uh, and then landing it on the ground required some local insight, local, pa local passion, people who knew the rules. Mm -hmm. So we approached the leading agencies in each country and said, should we have this piece of business, should we win this piece of business, would you be happy to collaborate with us and work with us? We built a network which was not a single branded network, but a, a network of independent agencies and the ones that had the appropriate skills we needed by country. And we call on these people from time to time and they call on us. So it's hugely transparent, a lot of trust. Um, we've built, we've made friends in Africa. Um, they're not competitors. Uh, hopefully working with us has, has helped them develop some new ways of thinking. And certainly we can very quickly tap into some insights by phoning the people we know in, in country and saying, here's an opportunity. Come and join us in Durban for a work session or we'll come and see you. Let's um, find a nice rich place to, to dig. Just a final question, Adele. Uh, you, you talk about this network of independent agencies. I look at other competing agencies to you, like Fox P2, Joe Public, OFYT, the Hardy Boys. Are we starting to see perhaps the, the rise of the independent agency as a force to be reckoned with in the South African marketing space? I, I really think you do. I mean, if you look at people like Fox P2, you look at King James and you look at uh, Owen Kessel and ourselves, um, we hold big brands in our portfolios. So I think there's a confidence now amongst the major brand owners that if, if you get into a tight, highly responsive, um, highly intuitive small agency, you probably get a lot of insight, a lot of input, you get a lot of passion because we're probably a little bit hungrier because we need um, to work on bigger brands who make our, our names known and felt. And also, you know, I've built relationships with people in those agencies. Um, I talked to the guys from Fox P2 and we're going to share the network and we're going to work together. I think it's right that we start to collaborate um, more openly. Um, agency the world traditionally has been highly competitive and a little bit selfish. Uh, which is naive. I think we can help each other, and I think that's starting to happen. Dale Tomlinson from the Hardy Boys in Durban, thank you very much for joining us. Well, from advertising to journalism now, and finally this week, journalist Josh Rushing co hosts Fault Lines, Al Jazeera's English flagship program about the Americas. As an international correspondent, Rushing has hosted and produced programs all over the world. He was in South Africa recently addressing the 2013 Menel Media Freedom Conference here in Johannesburg. I'm Josh Rushing, and this is Fault Lines. The Iraqi people have seen civilians being killed by this regime for a long time. When I started, uh, helped start Al Jazeera English, um, yeah, in America there were certain news outlets that ran my picture with the word traitor underneath it um, that still can be found online. A lot of uh, death threats on the web. So they say I'm a terrorist, uh, and then they publish my home address, and then they say I should be taken out before I can give the enemy too much information. It was a particularly hard time for me in the sense that, you know, coming from Texas, that's a fairly conservative, very conservative background, joining the Marines when I was only 17, being a Marine for my entire adult life, and then resigning out of a sense of civic obligation to do the right thing, um, and then to be uh, called a, a you know, terrorist and a traitor by, by these people who have done nothing more than publish a blog was very difficult for me. Um, I had just in kind of finding my own identity there uh, was, was difficult. Al Jazeera America wants to compete with CNN in the United States. Uh, it's going to be for an American market. They're opening a dozen bureaus across the U.S., uh, including across the Midwest, the South, out West. Um, they're hiring over 700 journalists and it's an experiment, it's an attempt to bring journalism back to cable news. Because right now, cable news in the U.S. is media, it's entertainment, but it's not journalism. And, and so when they see Al Jazeera and the way it reports America, uh, the American audience will see a distinct difference between media and journalism. Uh, they're going to see a lot of Americans on. What you see in American networks right now is they throw out a topic of the day, and then they have two people in the studio talk about it. Because that's a lot cheaper than sending a journalist out to actually find stories and interview you know, people on the streets. But 
Al Jazeera, that's what we do. We send journalists out, we interview people on the streets, people suffering injustice, we, we, we hold people to account, we do difficult interviews with people uh, in government, and we put that into a story, a package, and we put it on air. It's what, you know, news used to always be. Uh, but somehow America kind of forgot that along the way. And I think when Americans see that, it's going to be an interesting experiment to see if, if they still want that kind of journalism on their cable TV, or if they, they find all the news they want on the internet. There's a way to think about this, and, it, and, and, and young journals probably already get this. It's, I, I feel like I actually explain this more to people of my age, uh, because this is the way young, young people see it, is as a journalist, you, you find information and, and, and you share it with others. You, you, you find a bunch of information, you tie it to a story, and you share it with others. Now, when you do that, you can do that in about a million different ways. You can do that on television, and you can do that in a print article in a magazine or newspaper, and you can do that with photos that you took, even if they're with your phone. You can do that with the tweets that you put out about it, and you can do that on your Facebook page and your Instagram. And so this whole idea of the convergence of the internet and television, the whole idea of how social media affects journalism is a bit, it, it, it's a discussion for people of my age, but not for young people. That for young people, they kind of get it. They just generate content. And all these things, be it Twitter or a television channel or YouTube, that's just the way all this content flows out and away from them through these million different little uh, vessels or, or veins, if you will. But the important part is generating the content, understanding the content, and being able to tie those pieces together. The other stuff is just kind of the mechanics of it. And that's this week's show. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye to you. ENCA.com.